Ford is for his long tenure. Probably in this country, anyway, it's his best chance. Uh, many of you were fortunate enough to, to know John Baylor. Uh, it's a name, certainly if you don't know him, and you've heard the name, you've recognized it. Uh, so he was probably our best advocate as an industry. But more than that, uh, he was a loving husband. Henrietta, Father to Sue, we're so happy and so fortunate that they're both here to join us. Um, and we want to do a special presentation, but, but rather than I do it, you know, we thought it best to have a longtime friend of John Baylor, Dr. Gary Dicefield, uh, come and, and share some more with us. So, Gary, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Chad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my 40th consecutive AFGC conference. I don't know how many presentations that I have made to this conference over the years, and I can tell you without fear of contradiction, this is the hardest thing I've, I've tried to do in this organization. Because you see, today we recognize a pioneer, a leader. We recognize a legend. We recognize a very dear friend. We recognize a mentor. We recognize someone who has advised each of us. Now, Chad, I'm not sure which button is working here. I, w I was fearful of this when they were dragging those cords up here. <laughs> I just need to advance it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's important to know what button to push. On May the 8th, 2013, the Forge World, and I do say world, not just as Pennsylvania or not just the U.S., but the Forge World uh, lost a true pioneer. And we as the American Forge and Grassland Council lost our leader and our founder and our most faithful member. The American Grassland Council was formed to involve all three segments the scientist, the producer, and of course, industry. John Rogers has already told you about what John Baylor did in Pennsylvania. Had it not been for John Baylor and his leadership, we would not be meeting here today. Had it not been for John Baylor and his leadership, we would not have the Origin Grassland Foundation. And those are just a, a few of the things. He was AFGC's very first president. This is the AFGC first executive committee taken in 1968. National Grassland Field Days. John was the leader in, in establishing and served as chairman of the Grassland Field Days. And indeed, this was the first one, but there were more, more to come. This was during a transition period uh, in the life of this organization. John always liked to hang around pretty women. That's why he chose Henrietta. But this was Miss, Miss Milkmaid, and I want to say a very special thanks to Tina Bowling, who spent hours going through pictures and putting this presentation together. If silage was going to be a, a part of our forage program, we had to get scientists and industry and farmers together to find some method of solving the problems. The conferences begin with just a basic group of scientists. As things progressed, they realized that industry had to be involved. John Feather realized that without the farmers, uh, there could be no organization. So that's how all three sections... The approach to, to getting more people involved, to getting more information out, came in the form of, of workshops around the country uh, and uh, meetings that, that gave us an opportunity to talk more about quality silage. The 1974 uh, AFGC conference, this is uh, most of the board of directors. Now we're starting to get a few people that some of you in the audience will start recognizing uh, in there, including uh, both John and Warren on the front row. The 1975 conference was in Omaha, and those of you that's followed since then know that we have been back. And that really was the groundwork for getting the SRM AFGC uh, together for that conference. The 14th International Grassland Congress. 
John was the chairman of the uh, International Grassland Congress that was held in Kentucky in 1981. He and Henrietta moved to Kentucky and spent a sabbatic there. They worked extremely hard, but now this was not John's first experience in International Grassland Congress. He also organized the Congress many years before down in Brazil. John probably still holds the record uh, of Americans that have attended more International Grassland Congresses than any other. As a result of the International Grassland Congress in Kentucky and John's leadership and his efficient use of finances, that we ended up after every bill was paid at that conference and we had $100,000 left. Now there was a lot of discussion about what to do with that. However, John had a vision for the future. He wanted to see that that money could be used indefinitely. And so he, he laid the groundwork, got a good group of people together and set up the Forage and Grassland Foundation. From that $100,000 initially in 1981, we had a meeting yesterday and that fund has grown uh, to about $413,000 and we've sponsored various events across the country including just recent sponsorship of travel grants to the International Grassland Congress uh, in, in Australia. The 14th International Grassland Congress had a steering committee that really started to work way before uh, this picture was taken. Some of the people you'll recognize in there, Betty Thompson in the back and Bill Templin was going to come in as president after that and of course John being the chairman of that group. It was held at the University of Kentucky. John spent time on that campus. He worked a lot with the gentleman on your left who's Dr. Orrin Little who was our dean at the time and the gentleman on the right who was the secretary and that's Dr. A.J. Hott who was chairman of the agronomy department. As a result of that John was invited to be the keynote speaker at the 15th International Grassland Congress uh, in Japan in 1985. The equipment industry had the problem of developing equipment that could harvest, that could uh, uh, chop, that could ensile. We're here today and as I look out at this audience and see the mix of people that we have, this is a result of the efforts that John Baylor and his vision. He realized that in order to be effective we had to involve all segments of our industry. And as we look at what we've seen over the last decade with this, there's more farmers in here today uh, than there certainly were a decade ago. There's more industry people in spite of a shrinking industry base. That was John's vision. His vision was without the three sectors, we could not operate efficiently, and it's never been more true uh, than today. John also had an interest in, in uh, old equipment. For all of you who went to the, uh, the Pennsylvania Council Conference when we had the uh, AFGC there, we had a tour out to the uh, Penn State Pastoral Museum, and that museum is a collection of a lot of the old farming equipment, all, a lot of the old hang equipment, and John's last presentation before this particular conference was on one piece of that equipment, the Panama hay press uh, that he really put together. John uh, organized a special events there, and then he also had interest in equipment development over the years. One of his last farm visits that he made was made at, at his request. We had him in Kentucky, and he specifically wanted to go to Clayton Gerald's farm. We took him, and, and he and Clayton uh, piddled around all day on equipment. I'm not sure what all they did, but they had a lot, had a lot of fun, and so, so did we. I don't know how to, to think about the awards. I don't know and never worked with anyone who was recognized more by more groups than Dr. John Baylor. John has been, has been uh, recognized at the county, the state, the national, and the international level. And you know about it. He's won every, received every award this organization has, including its highest award, the Medallion Award, every award that Penn uh, State has. He even has the Public Service to Alfalfa Award from the state of Kentucky. And it was indeed my honor to present that to him a few years ago. What some of you may not know is some of the academic sides of John's award. John was an inspiration. And whether you realize it or not, if you're a young extension specialist in here, you're involved in the American Society of Agronomy or Crop Science Society of America, John Baylor laid the groundwork for your accomplishments there. John was the very first forage, a very first extension specialist in America to ever receive both the ASA and the CSA, CSSA fellow. Now that for extension people was unheard of in the day, but he laid the groundwork for several that followed for that. Also, he was an advocate to make sure industry was recognized. 
whereas that organization or those organizations have historically only recognized academics. We made progress because of people like uh, John Bailey. This award was presented to both John and Betty Thompson, our two executive directors uh, in 1988 uh, for their accomplishments uh, over the years and for their contributions they made. Just recently in Louisville, Kentucky at the American Forge and Grassland Council, John was presented with the Vivian Allen Illumination Award. Bill Tucker conceived this idea and, and uh, the pre presentation was made and uh, John was there to receive that and we, uh, we were delighted to see him. We had the opportunity to go to Pennsylvania for the 50th anniversary conference there and what, a, what an event that was to see people showing up, coming out to one, a wonderful uh, location, wonderful meal and seeing John be recognized. We had the opportunity to present him a plaque there. Um, most of the, those people up there are most are past presidents of the American Forge and Grassland Council and that indeed was quite an honor. The American Forge and Grassland Council was extremely fortunate to have John Vader serve as a historian. John wrote the, the first 50 years of this organization. That exists. There's a copy of it in the silent auction. If you haven't read that, I hope you'll bid on it. And if you are unlucky and don't get that, you see me or you see Tina and we'll loan you a copy. It's outstanding. And as a result of that, we, we asked John to do that in 1988 and appointed him as historian in 1999. And then we realized a few years ago we had a lot of other material that's accumulated since then. And so we had the idea of, of, of doing an oral history. And John agreed to do that. Uh, and we made two different trips to Berea, Kentucky, worked with Pina, and she, she and Mark were delightful hosts to host us there. We did that, and uh, that taping has been finished. We had one more trip planned there for this past, past year, which unfortunately uh, we didn't get to make. Now, one of the greatest honors of my career and one of the greatest challenges of my career occurred over about a three-day period when Tina and Cheryl and Henrietta at least emotionally locked us in the room and said, you know, you're not going to come out till you get this job done. Now, I didn't know John was such a hunting man until we got doing that taking. He chased more rabbits in those three. It, it was hard for me to keep him on track, but I learned so much from sitting there and just pushing buttons on the recorder and getting him, him to talk. And uh, so that was a personal delight for me. Today we honor John as a true pioneer, legend, as a leader, as a friend, as a mentor, as an advisor. But Cheryl and I have had the pleasure of knowing John and Henrietta for, for many years. And we know him as being a very loving husband, a very loving father. And we can't repay uh, Henrietta and that family for what they've given up over the years to, to permit John to come uh, to uh, this organization and give as much time as he could. And I'm not sure what's going on now, but the, the picture I'm looking at now is John and Henrietta. Uh, they, they got married in 1950. Uh, and uh, the, it, it, um, if you could just see what I'm seeing, it, it's a pretty picture. <laughs> i tell you what, let's make a line and just form up here. And, and... <laughs> hey, look at that, all right. Now, there's John surrounded by the ladies of his life, his two wonderful daughters and two granddaughters. And you notice how that smile keeps getting bigger and bigger. Well, he's not finished yet. The biggest smile he has when he's got those two granddaughters uh, uh, hugged up there. It's difficult to, to put this slide up because we'll never say goodbye to John Baylor because his legacy is going to live on. Yesterday at the Origin Grassland Foundation, we had received a check from Henrietta for um, contributions to the foundation. We spent considerable time as a foundation deciding what we wanted to do. There was no way that money was going to go into our general account. So the decision of the board yesterday of the Origin Grassland Foundation was to start a national scholarship in honor of John. The foundation went further to say that they're going to do that and they're, they're going to match this year up to $15,000 
for anyone else that makes a contribution to that. 100% of all the revenues and all the money going in there will go to scholarships. It will be go for a, a national one. It will go to any deserving young scientist that, that's approved by our committee, our, our scholarship committee, that's going into a forage livestock program. There's already one that exists for John for Pennsylvania students, but this one will be national. Uh, we haven't got any information out on that yet, but uh, we have started that, and, and, and I'm so uh, delighted that we're able to do that. Now, we want to do one other thing. The American Forage and Grassland Council wants to, to honor Henrietta in a very special way. Never been done before. Two things. One, a certificate of appreciation, and two, a lifetime membership. Henrietta Baylor is the only one that has the potential for ever breaking John's record for attendance at this meeting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Henrietta Baylor. Henrietta, a few and two of the daughters. Get, look around. Look around the room. Get another Kleenex out. <laughs> right. Folks, thank you so much. Uh, we're right up to the time that we need to go to the next session. And Chad, unless you have something else, uh, I conclude that.